Hi, I'm Mrs. Sloan, and I want to walk you through your lab map for AP Biology Investigative Lab 4. All right, so first thing I want you to see is up here at the top, this is a link to a digital copy of the lab from the College Board, so you're definitely going to want to read through that um, and so you have an understanding of the lab. Also, it will be in this uh, digital copy of the lab. You'll be able to find some of the responses you need for the background in the pre-lab. Okay, next you'll see the rubric here for how I'm gonna grade your lab. It is worth 40 points. Um, and then this is a presentation. I will update it to the Pear Deck presentation. Currently it's a PDF, but I'll make it a link to the Pear Deck that I'm gonna give you in class. And then this is our course shared data. And so in this link, per your period and group number, you will record your data. So on um, your lab map, you have the title, you have your driving question, what causes my plants to wilt if I forget to water them. On your background, you have five different bullets here. I want you to write these and respond to these in complete sentences, not like a worksheet. So don't rewrite the question. Incorporate the, the statement, or what I'm asking you to do, incorporate that into your sentence structure. And I would like you to leave one space when you explain why cells must move substances across their membranes. After you use a sentence or two to explain that, leave one space and then do the next part. And you would say diffusion is blah, 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 blah. And you would talk about the ways water can move across. You would leave a space and then you would say, I would let, you know, define these three terms and relate it to a solution's water potential. And I give you some other things here. So you're gonna leave a space between each one of how you respond in complete sentences to each of these bullets, all right? Um, next, you're gonna do a pre-lab um, observations. And this first one is a diffusion demonstration. And so you're going to write number three, pre-lab observations A, part one, you're putting this in your lab notebook, initial observations. You need to make this data table. It needs to have enough room that you can write the initial color or any final colors that are happening here. Okay, for um, II, diffusion of IKI, iodine, starch, and glucose, this is a class demo. And you're, instead of writing out all these instructions right here, you're just going to put a little diagram, just this little diagram right here, okay? And instead of having to write all of this out, this is just for you to know how to do it. I'm gonna demonstrate that for you if you wanted to repeat that. You do need to make this data table. Um, so you're going to write diffusion of IKI, you're going to put this little picture under here, and then you're going to make this data table. Again, you need to be able to write colors and positive negatives here for glucose. These are going to need at least like three to four lines in your lab notebook because you're going to be making some conclusions about the movement of glucose, iodine, and starch based on that demo. Okay, so that's part one of your pre-lab. Part two of your pre-lab is you're going to be assigned three molarities that you use for this part of the lab and the latter part of the lab as well. And so you're gonna write those three molarities that get assigned to your team. Once again, you do not need to re write out all of this. You're just going to put this diagram that I have right here and that would show you how to repeat it. So you're gonna be putting two mils of your assigned solution in a dialysis tube, and I'll show you what that is in class. And you're gonna tie off either end, tie off one end, put in your solution, tie off the other end, and then you're going to put that into beakers of water. So you will get three of these molarities, and so you'll have three bags in three different beakers. And you will take the initial mass, the final mass, and percent change in mass. Um, and I'm telling you right here how to calculate percent change in mass. And then you will need to leave room under, under your data table. You need to leave room so you can show me your calculations. So you can show me the math for your three solutions. You will also record the, what you uh, did, let's say you had 0 0.4 and 0.8, if those were your three solutions, you will record that into um, here. There will be a link to the course shared document for us, and you all will have editing rights to that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to then record here the percent um, change averages from all three classes class periods, then we'll have a larger sample size. Um, you don't want to be outlier data if your data 
doesn't fall into line with everybody else's. You probably did it wrong. So we're not going to include your data um, in our class averages. We're going to eliminate it. You don't want to be outlier data. Then your analysis for this is what trend do you see in this data? And you're going to write it as a claim. You're going to support it with evidence and then give your reason. All right. So those are modeling. This dialysis tubing is going to model a cell membrane for us. And um, then in this, in, in those two pre-labs, but then in your water potential lab, we're actually going to use living tissue. We're going to be using potatoes. And I've given you the hypothesis here, and you will just write that. Um, this is just for your information. Your independent variable is the molarity of solution that you're going to be putting potato cylinders in. Your dependent variable is the mass of the potatoes, and you're going to use that to calculate percent change in mass. So this is your five element flow chart. Um, your constants and your control go up here. Your procedures, what calculations you're going to use, a simple diagram with your input, which is your independent variable, and your output, which is your dependent variable, and you show your safety um, considerations. So you can use my flow chart right here. In the future, you should be able to come up with your own flow charts for your experiments once you read the instructions, all right? Your data tables. You have one molarity that is assigned, or excuse me, three molarities that are assigned to you. So you're gonna tell me the initial mass of your potatoes, your final mass, and then your percent change in mass, and you need to leave room here to show me our calculations that you did that. And then here, you are going to put the class um, course shared results. Um, and we're gonna look at the averages there. That's where you stop on your pre-lab for that. The understanding of what we're gonna do with that, um, we're going to be needing to graph that information. And from that, we will be able to predict the water potential of the potato plants that we used in our lab. We're gonna do some more claim evidence reason and write up our conclusions. But to be ready for class, you can stop right here. I wanna remind you one more time, okay? Um, for your pre-lab, you're going to need to answer these five bullets, which some of them have multiple items in it. And to get those answers, you're going to need this right here, this lab. Book. Okay, you can use your notes too. You're going to put all of this, right? Diffusion, you're going to have this table. You're going to draw this picture. You're going to have this table, leaving room like four or five lines here to give your analysis on glucose, iodine, and starch, okay? Then you're going to put part two, make this little tiny table. Again, you don't need to write all this out. Just put in this picture and you're going to need to make this data table as well. You're going to need to leave room here for you to calculate your percent change in mass under here. So I would leave maybe five to six lines right here. Okay. And then you're going to need to leave room right here for your analysis, another five to six lines. So when I say you need to leave space below in order to do all of that, I would say conservatively speaking, I would do about 15 lines at least, conservatively speaking, depending on how much room um, or how large you write. Okay. Then your um, water potential lab, you'll write the hypothesis, not this. You'll make your flow chart. Um, and then you, you, you don't need to write out here about this is just me helping you out what it is, but you, this is the data table you're going to need. Again, you're going to leave room right here to show your calculations. Um, so again, I would probably leave maybe five to six lines. Um, so I'll put it right here for you, about five lines to have so you can put your calculations right there and then you'll put the class averages and then that's it for your pre-lab okay so um i recorded another video where i gave you more of the details of the lab and that's going to be made available for you as well and um, i'll see you in class ready to go